hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, wherever you are on this Sunday morning, come on and get glad that it is indeed Sunday morning. Come on and get glad that God woke you up on this Sunday morning. Come on and get excited about what God is doing in your life right now. Don't wait until it's already done. Don't second guess what God is in the middle of doing. Don't count it out because it didn't happen on last year. Come on and get excited because God woke you up on this morning. If you've got no other reason to be excited about God, I suggest you give him a high praise just for that alone. Because there are many who don't have the breath of life in their lungs right now. There are many who are on machines breathing for them right now. But you are counted amongst the ones that God is touching. He's moving. He's doing some things. There's some action that is happening in your body right now. So come on and lift him up. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and let him know. Know that you know that you know that he is God. He is God alone. He don't need no help. He's not worried. He ain't caught by surprise. Come on and give him a praise. Oh, come on and give him a praise. Oh, God, we thank you on this morning, God. Oh, Lord, we lift your name on high this morning, oh, God. Oh, Father, how grateful we are, Lord, that the days that the doors of Faith Community Church International are open for you, oh, God. They're open for your people. People, oh, Father God, they're open because you have a word for us on this day, God. A word that must go forth on this day, oh, God. So, Lord, we came to hear it, God. We came to receive it, oh, God. We came that we might be filled up by it, oh, God. We came that we might lift you up, oh, God just to give you glory, God, just to give you thanks, God, just to give you honor, oh, Father God. Lord, we bless your holy and righteous name. Lord, we are just grateful that you are, are in our hearts on this morning, oh, God. We're grateful, Father God, for your presence in our lives, oh, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you're keeping us warm on this stormy day, oh, God. We're grateful, Father God, that you're blessing our bodies and our souls on this day, oh, God. We are grateful, Father God, that you are moving on our behalf, Lord. Father, we don't ever just want to be consumers of your word, God. Consumers of your love, God. We want to be used by you, oh God. We want to be in motion for you, oh God. We want to be on fire for you, oh God. So Father, we ask, Lord, what is the assignment on this day, God? What is the assignment for the year, oh Father God? What is it that you would have us do, Father God, that you would be glorified, oh God? What is it, Lord, that you would have us do, oh God, that the devil told us we couldn't do, oh Lord, but you created us especially for this assignment, oh God? Lord, what is it that we can do for you, oh Lord? Father, we know we can never outgive you. We can never outdo you, God. We can never out outrun you, God. We're here. We're standing, Lord. We're standing, God, in the presence of your greatness, oh Lord. Heads bowed, arms open wide, ready to receive you, ready to take on the charge, Lord. Father, show us, God. Show us what it is your will, God. Show us, oh Lord, how we can serve your people serve you by serving your people God show us Lord how to be a blessing out in the community God never let the walls of faith community church be closed and roped off God this church is for the community God this church is for the people God bring in the souls who need to hear your word who need to be connected to this body God in this season, when you're connecting the dots, Lord, connect the people to this mission, God. Lord, we bless your name on this day, oh God. Lord, we lift up a high praise, God. We, we are seeing your word, Lord, at work in the life of our prophetess, our co-pastor, God. We are seeing the miracles right before our eyes, God. That you brought her through the trial, oh God. That it was not ever easy, Lord. But you picked up the yoke, God, and carried it for her, oh Lord, that she would have the victory, God. We thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for our pastor, God, the senior pastor of this house, God. I hear you telling him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
I hear those words that you would say to him, God. He has been running nonstop, Lord. He's only able to keep up that kind of pace because of you, God. And he's the kind of man, Lord, that knows to give you the glory and the honor. He knows that he's not doing it on his own. And that's what he teaches us. That's what he teaches his sheep, God. And so we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, God, that you have given us an awesome, incredible first family, God. That we see your glory in their lives, Lord. We ask you, God, that you will, will always protect them, Lord. And camp your angels around them, oh God. Keep their spirits filled, their cups filled, God. Let them run over, God. Let us be there, God, when it, when it runs over, God. Let it drip on the congregation, Lord. We're behind your leadership, God. We're behind your word, oh God. We're behind the throne, oh God. It's never for our glory, Lord. It's always for you, God. It's always for you, God. You are the source, oh God. You are the one who proves the devil to be a liar. You are the one who exposes every trick of the enemy for what it is, God. It's not the truth. It's a trick. Thank you, God. Lord, we bless you on this day, God. Lord, we honor you on this day, oh God. Lord, we lift up our hands in total adoration unto you on this day, oh God. We are excited, God. We are excited, oh God. We are excited, God, to be with you, to walk with you, to talk with you, to fast for you, God. Give us wisdom in this fasting season, Lord. Give us clarity in this fasting season, oh God. Give us newness, new, deeper revelation of yourself in this season while we're fasting, God. Let us come out of this fast, God, brand new, Lord, in every way, oh God. Healed, delivered, set free, mended. Thank you, Lord. Let us be loved and be loving. Let us be forgiven and be forgiving. Let us be provided for and be providers. Let us have hands laid on us and be layers on of hands, God. Do it in this season, Lord. You alone are the source. It all comes from you, God. It all belongs to you, oh God. And we honor you on this day, Lord. We bless your holy name as the praise team comes forth. Come on and put your hands together and thank God for the talent that he's bringing into this house. Thank God for, for the word that they are about to sow into your hearts. Come on and put your hands together for the praise team. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise yeah, the Lord, Lord, everybody. How many know that God is in control? God is in control. Does anybody know that God is in control? No matter what the situation looks like, God is in control of the situation. We might be going through it, but when it ends, God is in control. Just wave your hands if you know God is in control. Sovereign God, sovereign King, I trust in you. I trust in you. Sovereign God, sovereign King, I trust in you. I trust in the old saying Sovereign God, Sovereign King I trust in your trust
They say, whatever you're doing when the new year comes in, you're going to be doing it. But I believe, God, that we praise him on Friday night when the clock strikes 12, we was giving him praise. And on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., we're coming together to give you praise. So if nothing changed then, ain't nothing gonna change now. Your praise should not change. No, 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 to you. It might be raining on the outside. But God is due to do something on the inside. In order for things to grow, it needs water. In order for things to grow, it needs water. So it's raining outside. So when you stepped in the door, you planted the seed. God, I need you. God, I gotta have you. God, I want you. So as you begin to praise God, the water gonna fall on you. So it praises what uproots your flower. It praises what grows your bush. And I think you should praise God for the growth. I'm not playing with nobody on this set. Because if God cracked the sky, and he said, I know you not, because you had an opportunity to praise me for who I am. You had an opportunity to praise me for who I am. That's what I'm talking about. So if God came back today and said, those of you that are in my house, the only way you can see my face and to be able to praise my father is you got to give me some praise. If he said that, what would you do? If God said, praise me right now, what would you do? We can say thank you. What you gonna do? This is your what you gonna do moment. What are you gonna do? God is watching. God is watching. What you gonna show God? What you gonna show God? Is that what you gonna show him? This. No, sir. God said, praise me. This is what we, if you need instructions, let me show you how you praise him. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. If God said your breakthrough is coming through your praise, What's coming through your praise? How would you praise him? This is what church is attended for. To give God praise. To give God honor. To exalt him. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 2021. Thank you, Jesus. I do me in 2022. Thank you, Jesus. Sitting on that praise from 2021. 
New year, new praise. New year, new blessings. New year, if you want something new from God, you gotta do something new. If you want something different, you gotta do something different. 2022, we getting radical. 2022, we not holding back. We don't care who's around us. 2022 is me and you. 20, tell God right now. 2022 is me and you. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's on live. I don't care what I'm going through. 2022, it's me and you. Just us two. Just us. I don't care what my friends say. I don't care what they call me. Call me a holy roller. That's all right. I'll be that. Call me sanctified. I'll be that. Call me too much for God. I'll be that. I'll be that. Because the only way we're going to have a good year this year is if it's a good year spiritually. If this is a good year between me and him. I can't have a good year pleasing people. I can't have a good year pleasing people. It got to be about me and him. Now come on and lift your hands up and just declare that he is who he is. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my healer. Stand and proclaim that there's no greater name than the one I call in my time of help. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There is a name that's a place I can run and be saved. There is a name that can heal, calm my storms, peace be still. I can call on that name and be saved. This is my testimony. Things will change. Stand and proclaim. There is no greater name than Jesus. You are Jesus. Stand and proclaim. There is no greater name. Then Jesus, you are Jesus. Come on, y'all help me sing it. Sing, there is an end. That's a place. Yeah, I can run and be saved. There is an end that can heal. Calm my storms. Peace be still. I can call. I can call.
say. Say that name heals all. Stay. 
watch it work. I'll give it over to God and watch it work because that name heals all and it delivers all. And what? It works. It works. Yes, God. Thank you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Don't stop praising. Wherever you are right now, let this be a moment where you just praise God, where you just give it all over to God, where you have a radical praise because it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. That eviction notice, that name heals all. That name delivers all. And it works. That daughter, that son, that name heals all. That sickness, that name delivers all. And it works. There's no second guessing. There's no worry. It works. There's no time to, to wonder about it. There's no time to guess and try to figure it out. We already know. It works. It delivers all. It heals all. In the hospital right now, at the homeless shelter right now, at the battered women's shelter right now, it works. On your job right now, it works. In your house right now, that name heals all and it delivers all and it works. It works. Oh Lord, we bless your name for that God. Oh, what a wonderful and mighty word to lift up on your problem on this day. Comfort. Gives me comfort. Gives me peace of mind to know that there's something that works. And it works on my behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the praise team right now. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord for the praise team right now. Go on and, and put your hands together and thank God for them, Lord. They could be anywhere, but they choose to be here. And they bless us every time that we are, that they are, and we are grateful for them. Once again, welcome to Faith Community Church International. On behalf of our pastor, uh, Pastor Ronnie T. Northam, and our prophetess, our co-pastor, prophetess Ebony Northam, we thank you for being here to worship with us. We thank you for, for tuning in for walking with us on this Sunday, for being a part of this body, we thank you. We never ever take it lightly that you choose Faith Community Church International. So many churches out there, but you make a choice to be attached to this body. We bless the Lord for that, amen? Amen, at this time, it's my honor and my privilege to lead you all in the 2022 Profession and Confession you all know I get really, really, really excited about this word. This word is attached to my heart. And I could see at the end of 2021, so many things came to pass that words that I had been speaking from this confession statement every week, every day, and they came to pass. So that's kept me excited and attached to this word, why we do an affirmation, why we profess and confess what it is that we believe. So I'm always going to be excited about this. But we have a new one for 2022. You've heard it before. New word, same passion. Amen? I'm going to read it through. You can say it at home with me. I boldly declare that this is the year God is connecting the dots. Connecting every dot proves God's good and perfect will for my life, my family, and my future. Every piece of my puzzle is in its proper place, and my priorities are in order. Romans 8, 28 proclaims God's purpose is working in my life and manifesting an expected end. My latter days are guaranteed to be better than my former. This is the year I understand the assignment. The wisdom of God orders my steps. My fasting and my giving opens windows no man can shut. Every challenge I face, every obstacle in my way, and every negative report, God immediately shifts for my benefit. I will not quit. Distraction is the enemy. I am focused. My spirit of unity prevents offense. Oneness dictates the day. 
and forgiveness guards the night. God's blessings are chasing me and his promises shall run me over. This is the year God is connecting the dots for Faith Community Church International. Our vision is in alignment with God's vision. Our connection to the vision and the mission accomplishes kingdom goals. We are postured to build. Families are being united and financial freedom is at hand. Generational blessings are at hand. Our Abrahamic blessings are at hand. We are blessed to be a blessing. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable and come to pass in Jesus' name. Oh, come on and give them some glory for that word. Oh, come on and lift that word up over your own life on this day. Oh, come on and give him some praise because he is God. Amen? Put your hands together. It is time to bring our pastor up and he has a word for you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. Come on, bless him. 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 Come on, if you're in the sanctuary, come on, stand up, stand up. I know we're virtual, but I thank God that I'm not in here by myself. There are angels encamped all around about me. There are angels that are in the sanctuary. There are angels at your house, or in your house, in your room. Thank God for the snow. It is the manifestation of the glory of God. All the sleep is a manifestation of the glory of God. And so we honor him today. We give him great glory. Is there anybody, even though it's cold outside, your worship is still warm? Oh, hallelujah. I'm still ready and I'm percolating ready to give him glory and give him honor because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's been faithful. Thanks be unto God that God does not stop because of the weather, because the sun is not shining. We thank God that we serve a God that does not sleep nor slumber. But his eye is on the sparrow and he's watching us. Come on, type that on the screen. Come on, he's watching us. He's, he's watching us. He's watching us. He's watching God. God says, I got all, all seven of my eyes on you. The Bible says he has anthropomorphic features. The, the Bible describes he's a spirit. So he, the Bible says he has seven eyes that roam to and fro out throughout the earth. And God has his eyes on you. Hallelujah. Come on, tell us. Come on, shout it through your house. God has his eyes on you. Come on, shout it in your cubicle, in your office. Come on, scream it to the top of your voice. God has his eyes on you. I dare you to speak to somebody who needs to be saved and delivered in your family, in your house. God has his eyes on you. Praise God. Certainly we bless his name and we give him glory. It is good for us to be here. Certainly we shout out all our sights on this morning. Hallelujah, our Raleigh site, our Eastern Shore, Virginia site, our Durham site, our hub. Thank God for you. Certainly we just honor God and we bless him. We appreciate him. And while you're standing, while you're standing, come on, I need you to stand wherever you are. We, I, I first thing I want to do, I want to celebrate what God has done for prophetess. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Thank God she rang the bell on Thursday finished her 16th chemo treatment. Thank God for keeping us. Thank God for bringing us and we just give him glory. We give him honor. We appreciate him. Come on, give God some praise for healing. Uh, give God praise for endurance. Uh, give God praise for, for the ability to make it to the end. Give God praise for not fainting and giving up. We give you praise. And we thank God for you. We thank God. God, it's your favor. It's your grace that's kept us. And so we give you glory. We give you honor. Faith, I, I just thank God for you. I thank God for you. You you have supported us. You have supported this pastor and this, this family, the prophetess and I. We have felt your love and your support from the ministerial team, the deacon's ministry, all three locations, people are shipping baskets and, and, and sodas and, and 
boost all the way from my eastern shore location and we just honor God for the love and the compassion that faileth not. We just love you. We appreciate you. Our prophetess on, um, on Friday, we were just sitting and just reminiscing over the journey and she just bust out crying. She says, because people have been so good to me. They've been so good to us. And so we want to thank God. You know, I just want to share this. I just, just dropped in my spirit, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You read it when you get a chance. The Bible says that when you, when you are ministering to others, it's called an experiment. That's exactly what it says in the King James Version. It's an experiment. And it says that when you sow into other people's lives, you gain an intercessor. That somebody begins to pray for you. I, I, when you sow a seed, when you sow a soda, when you sow a, a basket, when you give a gift into somebody's life, you gain an intercessor. And they begin to pray for you. They give glory to God for you, and then they pray for you. Read it when you get a chance. That's why God says, I love a cheerful giver. God says, because they gain an intercessors on a daily basis. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated in the house of God. Certainly we just give honor. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for Trey for hanging out with us tonight. Y'all put God, put your hands together for Trey on the keys on tonight. Thank God for him being with us on today. Just hanging out with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And amen. I have a couple of pastoral announcements, and then we'll get into our our, our Sunday morning word, I think this is third Sunday. This is third Sunday, third Sunday in 2022. Somebody just say, welcome to the third Sunday of 2022. Certainly we honor God. We honor God. We want to thank God. Say hi to somebody on the stream today, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook. Say hi to somebody. Say hello to them. Greet them in the powerful name of Jesus. Tell them hello. Tell them hi. Tell them greetings. Tell them welcome. If it's your first time visitor, just say it's my first time here. We glad to have you sharing with us on today. I certainly want to just ask that we would keep in prayer, Brother Todd and uh, Brother Todd. We lift him up. We found out uh, uh, yesterday that he was in the hospital. He's been in the hospital for a few days now, and we're lifting him up and we're praying for him. He, in fact, he called me uh, just before worship, and I want to just thank God for him, and we're praying for him and his family, the whole Neely family. We're praying for them, and so we just ask that you uh, will keep him in your prayers. You have his phone. Just text him and tell him we're praying for him, and you're praying and lifting him up. We certainly honor God for that. We're also praying for members of our Raleigh site, Sister Patricia and, and Brother uh, Glenn. I call him Brother Theophilus. Uh, we certainly want to thank God they had to be taken to the hospital on uh, last night, and we just appreciate God watching over them and keeping them, and we're lifting them up in prayer, and we as a congregation love and appreciate you. We also want to do a couple of birthday shout outs. I want to just say happy birthday to Kylan. Kylan turned three. Uh, I want to just say happy birthday to her. She's been in several of the services, several new years she was here and she celebrated a birthday and we're about two half weeks probably getting her birthday. Little three years old and she just had a little crown on at church and so we just honor her. We thank God for her. And we certainly want to shout out Joshua Robinson, who turned 16 on last week. He turned 16. Come on, shout 16. Amen. 16. 16. And so we just honor God for him. Thank God for uh, Pastor Oren. Literally, Joshua has been like a Samuel. He's been at this church, labored at this church, served in this ministry, with, along with his father, making sure administrative things were done here. He's been here. He's been raised in this temple. And certainly we say happy birthday to him. And I want to let him know I have $50 for him. I have a $50 bill for him. Amen. Somebody type that on the screen. A $50 bill I have for Joshua. Amen. His dad said I could give it to him, but I ain't giving it to him. I'm putting it right in Joshua's hand. Amen. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> certainly, we uh, certainly appreciate all of those that are fasting with us. How's your fast going? How's your fast going? You you hanging in there? I, I, I felt something last week as I was, the days got a little longer and it was your flesh was uh, not responding appropriately. I felt like some of us might have fell off the boat that we somehow fainted. I want to encourage you to get back on the boat. I want you to stay with us 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can and expect that as we work toward the 31st day of this fast, your body is going to feel weak. Every day is going to be weaker than the day before. And so we want to encourage you to just stay focused. If you notice in the profession, it talks about the power of fasting, that it's going to open up windows that no man can shut. And so we encourage you to stay with us, hang in there with us. Uh, we want to just celebrate first fruits, first fruits, first fruits, first fruits on first Sunday of February. We're bringing our first fruits unto the Lord. Uh, tithes and offerings is at the end. The tithe is at the end. The first fruits is at the beginning. In other words, God, I'm asking you to bless. The, the first fruits is very similar to grace. Before I eat this food, I bless this food. And God says that the first fruits have, gives us an opportunity to bless bless what's getting ready to come. And the church said, amen. I can't wait to bring my first fruits. When I bring first fruits, I bring first fruits for my entire family. I want every one of my children, my wife, I want everyone in our four-person family to have their own field. Amen. I, I can give you some of mine, but God bless the child that has their own field. And so we want to Bring our first fruits and give them unto the Lord. In fact, I can't wait. I'm worshiping today. Uh, the Lord laid on my heart a just because offering. I'm just going to give a just because offering on the day because of God's faithfulness in a uh, prophetess and our lives. Uh, I want to encourage you that tomorrow is Dr. Bar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And so we're celebrating that. We want to thank God that this is, if we ever needed to remember those who have, who have, who have suffered that we may might encounter freedoms and, and, and have certain privileges. It is in this season now. We have to remember those who made sacrifice. If you be mindful, there are politicians that have forgotten that people died, that people suffered, that people were afflicted, that we might have a choice seat get to choose our seat, get to choose uh, and have the right to vote. And so we want to encourage you to make sure we celebrate and minister to somebody, serve someone on tomorrow. And the church said, amen. I want to call your attention this morning. I want to call your attention this morning. I want to go to the gospel according to St. John. We were there. We were there. On uh, Tuesday, the first Tuesday in Bible study, we were there first Tuesday in Bible study for 2022, and the Lord began to mess with me and just to touch me, and so I want to revisit that passage of Scripture. It is, was our meditation Scripture for the first week. I want to look even in Matthew chapter 17. I want to go to John chapter 15. I want to read a little bit in your hearing, and then I want to just uh, help us catch up, help us uh, uh, finish off and complete some things. I believe that there's a dot that needs to be added. There's a dot that needs to be added. There's a dot that needs to be added, and we will work to get those things done. Let's read. Let's read. If you go the gospel according to St. John chapter 15, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word. Come on, look at that. You are clean through the word which I have spoken. Spoken 
unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot. Come on, that's what we're looking at today. Verse 4 and verse 5. We want to revisit this passage, this teaching, get an understanding. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that bear abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gathered them and cast them into the fire. Look at that. Cast them into the fire and they are burned. So what your Bible says, then they all burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask, watch that, what ye will, and it shall be done. Watch this, unto you, done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. And this is the word of God. We ask that we would look to Jesus and live. Praise God. Bow with us for a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this preaching opportunity. God, I pray right now for preaching authority and preaching clarity. God, I cannot deliver this word adequately without your assistance. So, God, I pray that you will use me as a vessel. Bless your people with your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the people of God say amen and amen. Hallelujah. I want to ponder and consider the thought. Uh, I want to ponder and consider the thought. Uh, do unto you. Do unto you. Come on, type that on the screen. Do unto you. If, if you look at this text, the last time we were together, we used as a title, Fruit Are Dots. And so tonight, today, 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 we want to look at this text. And as we consider this text, I want to ponder this one little thought for today, and that is do unto you. Say that with me, do unto you. Come on, type it on the screen, Facebook, YouTube, type it on the screen, do unto you. When we're done, we want to understand do unto you you hashtag fruits and dots hashtag connecting the dots 2022 2022 pastor joseph 2022 pastor oren connecting the dots gary connecting the dots i am tickled pink as a pastor i'm inspired as a pastor to hear in the voices of the people to see as we interact with with members in pockets and and we're dialoguing with people on phones and in zooms we hear their spirits bouncing uh, concerning our 2022 theme connecting the Dots. And I just want to say and affirm again, according to God's perfect will, God is connecting the dots of our lives. This year, this year, this year, we will get a full glimpse of God's plan for us. We shall be witnesses of, watch this, this is what God gave it to me, the fullness of God manifesting himself in our lives. We will be witnesses, witnesses of the whole picture of how God is operating in our lives. Pastor Oren, we will see the manifestation of promises and the manifestation of dreams and the manifestation of destinies. This is a great year to be alive. Come on, won't you just shout that through your house, type that on the screen. This is a great year to be alive. God is going to put 
the pieces of the puzzle of your life together. In Bible study, Bible study a week ago, 12 days ago, in fact, the first Tuesday of 2022, John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8, that I read in your hearing. It just happened to be our fasting meditation, and it was the first Bible study of 2022. And I want to suggest to you that God desires us to be fruitful. When God says to us that I am connecting the dots in your life, immediately you are to see yourself in the produce department uh, uh, at, at the local grocery store, your Harris Teeter or your food line. You ought to see yourself there in Walmart understanding that I see all of these fruit and God desires for me to be fruitful. And it's amazing. It's amazing, prophetess, when I was driving home, when I was driving home, I was reflecting uh, 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 over how God spoke on Tuesday a week ago in Bible study. I was reflecting. I was processing. I was meditating. And the Holy Spirit began to convict me, Lisa. He began to convict me, Tanya. He began to convict me. He says, you know you forgot to say this and you didn't mention that and why did you leave this out and it was funny I laughed at myself for a minute because I processed the fact I ministered for a whole hour I preached for a whole hour it really wasn't enough time to say anything additionally so I felt the Holy Spirit tugging us and saying I need you to go back to John chapter 15 because there is a dot that my people need Need in order for there to be some connectivity manifesting in their lives. So this is part two of the fact that fruit are dots. Uh, emphasis today, uh, emphasis today, watch, it's going to be placed on do unto you. Come on, say that to yourself. Lay hands on yourself and say do unto you. You remember when we began with 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 John chapter fifteen, our our connecting the dots prophetic plan in John fifteen. You remember that we New Year's Eve we began in Psalm one thirty nine. Remember Psalm one thirty nine. How precious! Listen, also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great! is the sum of them. Uh, if the Lord says the same, we will be back there on next Sunday. Listen to what he says. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Remember New Year's Eve? Remember that we connected the dots and we understood that our thesis, our goal, our main point for New Year's Eve nights, that Thoughts are dots. Come on, say that with me. Thoughts are dots. Come on, we're teaching this. We're going to walk through this. Come on, work with me. Walk with, the, with me through this. That thoughts are dots. God's thoughts, our thoughts, they are dots. Dots. So when we get in our spirits, we must also learn that fruits are dots, not fruits with an S. Fruit are dots. Yes, thoughts are dots, and fruit are dots. Dots. Fruit are dots. In, in chapter uh, 15, in chapter 15, these first eight verses of John chapter 15, they discuss fruitfulness. The first eight verses help us to understand that God's goal for us, Trey, is that we might encounter fruitfulness. But we must understand how thoughts and fruit go together. Remember that thoughts are dots. Thoughts become fruit. Fruit, therefore, fruit are. 
dots, the connecting of all the experiences of our lives will hopefully bring us to a place of testimonies that explain the fruitfulness of God's participation in our lives. Because everybody wants to be fruitful. Come on, shout fruitful, fruitful. You want to be fruitful. You want your family to be fruitful. You want your family to be strong and to be vibrant. You want your family to be fruitful. Come on, say family, be fruitful. Nobody wants a family full of sickness and anger and bitterness and jealousy and illness and poorness. Uh, no, nobody wants a family that's always lacking. God desires, watch this, for us to be so fruitful that our children's children's children are blessed because of how he blessed us. And somebody said, Amen. Hallelujah. We want our marriages to be fruitful. Nobody wants a mushy marriage. Uh, nobody nobody wants a, a marriage like a banana when you peel it, that it has black rotten issues going on on the inside. We desire marriages. Watch this. We desire a home life. We desire a relationship with our spouse that makes you want to run home. And the church said, I wish I had five folk that don't mind running home. You can't wait to get home to be with your lady and be with your man. In fact, I remember as I was meditating on this word, I remember Pastor Joseph, I remember, I remember one night I got pulled over. Got pulled over on Dan Newby. I'm, I'm less than a mile from my house. I get pulled over uh, 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 by a police officer named Maurice. And Maurice pulls me over. He says, I noticed you were going across the lines. I noticed that you were driving like you were drunk, like you were intoxicated. Uh, prophetess was beside me. I said, sir, I don't drink. I haven't been drinking. The only thing I'm drunk with is love. I'm drunk in love with her. And the church said, amen. Beyonce stole that from me. She stole that. She stole that. I want my royalties. I want, I want my, I want my, I want my daddy's records. I want it back. Hear me because we want to be in a marriage that we can't wait to get home. Everybody shout fruitful. Oh, uh, my 24-year-old daughter, Ranye, for Christmas, dad, I couldn't wait to get home to be with you and to be with mom. But Jarius and Ranye are going through a season of dating seriously. And they are looking at life more seriously. Seriously, prophetess and I are now vetting the applications that have been submitted. You are with me. We're vetting them. We're vetting them uh, because everybody at Faith Community Church knows the rules are there are no donuts at the house. We cannot afford for you to come into our family and mess up our fruitfulness. Am I talking to anybody in here? Everybody shout fruitful. We want bank statements to be fruitful. When you log in online with your bank account, you want to see fruitfulness. You want to have a career that is fruitful. You don't want to be trying to apply for a new job every three months, but you watch this, want companies that have a queue for you. In other words, they're coming after you and they are willing to wait on you to come to them. That is fruitfulness. Somebody shout fruitful. Oh yeah, you want to be fruitful. You want your business, your entrepreneurship. You want it to be fruitful. You want our church to be fruitful. You want prophetess and pastor to be fruitful. We want our congregation, every location to be fruitful. Somebody shout fruitful. Yeah, we want to be fruitful. We want to be fruitful. And so when we read the text, when we read the text, when we read the text, the text in verse 1, look what it says. Look what it says in verse 1. Read it when you get to it. says, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. In fact, we'll read verse 2 even. Verse 2 says, even uh, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it that it may bring forth more fruit. Notice that Jesus says that I am the true vine. I am the true vine. And my father, watch this, is the husband 
working man. My father is the gardener. My father is the owner. It was funny, Pastor Joseph, I'm going home, I was reminded of Stump the Yard. Uh, when when the uh, when the uh, for sorority, when the fraternity comes to the brother as he's working, he says to him, gardening. We're going to let you get back to your gardening. Literally, God our Father is the gardener. Everybody shout gardener. God owns the garden. Everybody say he owns it. He owns it. And we are the branches. Come on, say that with me. We are are the branches we are the branches and in text he wants us to understand that there is an expectation of the branch to have a shifting of production what, what is that pastor it's right there in verse two look look at the text look at the text in verse two he says that every branch in me that beareth fruit watch this beareth fruit <laughs> beareth fruit when you're bearing fruit watch this god purges us so we can bring forth more fruit. Come on, say it with me. More fruit. Say it with me. More dots. Uh, and in verse 5, he says, he says that when we bring forth more dots, in verse 5, he says we bringeth forth much fruit. So in other words, God graduates us from verse 2, fruit to more fruit, to verse 5. We are now bringing forth much fruit. Everybody shout much fruit. In other words, we learned the last time we were together with this text is that, that, that God does not want us to be stuck on saints. I don't, I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to, but God says I'm getting ready to change your altitude. God says I'm getting ready to take you higher. God says I'm getting ready to take you off autopilot, and I'm getting ready to take you to another level in me. And the church said, "Amen." You have to insist on increase. And the church said, you got to insist. Teach your children. Say it to your children. Pastor said, the word said, insist on increase. But we, as we learn in Bible study, we learn that it doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Come on, type it on the screen. It doesn't just happen. Increase just doesn't happen. You don't go from fruit to more fruit to much fruit. It doesn't just happen. Look what the text says. It says, it says that, that we are purged. Uh, the, the, when you're bearing fruit, when a branch is bearing fruit, God purges it. Is that what the Bible says? It says every branch in me, I purge it when it bringeth forth fruit. Yeah, yeah, he purges it. He purges it. That word purge means cut. Next verse, it says cut. Everybody say cut, cut. And that's what we remember. Remember we learned that Tuesday night. I believe that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God says I needed to make sure some people have it reiterated in your life. That God will purge you. That God will cut you. Everybody shout cut. We learn in the text that he cuts off those that are bearing no fruit. And he cuts those Back, who are bringing forth fruit so they can bring forth more fruit. Everybody say more fruit. He purges us. He cuts us. Remember we learned, we learned that, that God will cut you. He will cut you. He will, he will cut you. I know, I know you have all the criteria and you should be the first one picked for the opportunity but when God skips over you, that will cut you. It will cut us. I know you have seven degrees. Oh, You've been working 13 and a half years to get all of these degrees but you still Still haven't been hired. God says, I'm trying to cut you. Somebody got a pink slip last month. Somebody got your salary cut in half. God says, I am trying to cut you. Somebody went to some uh, uh, unexplainable breakup. You don't know how it happened and what happened. But God says, I am trying to cut you. And the church said, it was funny, it was funny as I'm meditating, as I'm meditating on this word uh, for today as I'm meditating on this word. You, you know my Exxon gas story. <laughs> you know when we first moved here to Plant Faith Community Church 1998 and I'm at the Exxon gas station a half a mile down the street and here I am I have five dollars to 
put in a 535 I series BMW and I sat there and I cried. I want you to understand that even though I was crying, it was God starting to cut me. And I don't know who it is, but you find yourself crying all the time. You find yourself pressed up and your tears are running down your sheet. God says you need to understand I am cutting you. I am purging you. You have been so fruitful that I will cut you so you can bring forth more fruit. Somebody shout more fruit. Uh, we learned, we learned in Tuesday in Bible study that when you cut the plant, when you cut the plant, it automatically creates in the stem hormones and, and, and elements inside of the branch that cause it to grow. Stimulation happens inside of the branch and causes it to grow when you cut it. Everybody say cut it. Oh yeah, you gotta cut it. You gotta cut it. You gotta cut it. Uh, verse 3 says it like this. You are clean by the word. When God cuts us, when God purges us, he cleans us through the word. Everybody say through the word. Yeah, through the word, through the word. Now watch this, watch this. I want you to read it because I want you to see it. Look what he says. He says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Is that what the Bible says? Look what it says. Look what it says. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So God cuts us, and then he starts to clean us and, and stimulate growth by using the word to clean us up. You are with me. Notice what the text says, Pastor Joseph. It says that we are clean by the words he has spoken. Is that what your Bible says? Notice, notice, notice what it says. Now, ye are clean through the words which I have spoken. Say that, I have spoken. In other words, God says you don't need a new word. You don't need a 2022 word. I gave you a word in 2021 that will cause you to be cleansed and delivered. Oh, you are with me. Ain't that what the Bible says? Look at it. It says, he says, he says, he says, you are clean by the words which I have spoken. And in other words, Jesus says, I don't have to say anything new to you. I've already taught you and spoke to you what will bring life to you and cause you to grow. But you remember when we were together. Remember when we were together. Remember I told you God cut me. And when you get cut, it causes you to receive a word. Sometimes we are receiving a word and we haven't been cut completely quite yet. And so therefore the word doesn't hit the way it needs to hit. Am I talking to somebody? Notice what Jesus says. I, I, you're clean by the words I have spoken unto you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, I, I, I've already given you some words. I've already visited you in your devotion. I've already allowed a sermon to be preached that is the word for you. God says that will clean up your life. God gave it to me like this. You remember last year when we were in the season of pride and we were teaching pride and preaching on pride and we dealt with pride? See, it didn't quite give you what you needed and you were like, oh, I'm tired of this for four weeks in a row. In fact, it was at the beginning of the summer. We're working through pride in 2021. And you're like, for four weeks, I don't want to hear this. But God says, now that you've been cut, why don't you go revisit the streams? Because God says you will be clean by the words that have already been spoken. And the church said, see, find me some folk who are bored in church, bored with church, and I will show you a Member who after they are cut just needs a word that's have already been spoken. You ever seen folk, I need a new church. I need a new word. Excuse me, you don't need a new church. You don't need a new word. You just need to allow God to completely cut you and receive what's already been spoken. Don't make me work up in here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel the Holy Spirit. See, you can you can be so deep that you get cut and you ignore the cut. 
Oh, you can be like a ball player and you can go win a championship even though your leg is broken. God says you got to be careful when I have cut you, receive what I already say. Oh, y'all ain't going to pray with me. Can I just work a minute? Oh, we get upset and frustrated uh, when pastor's not preaching. That, that, that shows you somebody who doesn't know and understand a cut. Uh, if you understood a cut, you could get a word despite who's on the ministerial team. When you've been cut, you know what? I receive everything. Everybody God has chosen to speak into my life. You are with me. Oh, oh yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing that, that here I have, I, I haven't ministered two Sundays in 2022. And so when I watch God move me out of the way, what I saw was God connecting dots. You are with me. Come on, stay with me. Oh, stay with me. We are clean by the words that have already been spoken. Watch this. This is going to mess you up. This is, I didn't say this last time, or I didn't say it like this. Watch this. The gardener does the cutting. Mm -hmm. The gardener, gardener, God, God the Father does the cutting. Oh, stay with me. See, see, we're branches, and everybody else is a branch. There are basically three people. There's the gardener, the owner. There's Jesus, who is the vine. And everybody else, all of us, connected to Jesus in relationship with Jesus. Those who have confessed Jesus. Watch this. We are the branches. Everybody say branches. <laughs> and watch this, Pastor Joseph. Watch this, Pastor Owen. Watch this, Trey. He cuts back the branches that are fruitful. But he cuts off the branches that were bearing no fruit. The Lord told me to talk to somebody because you keep trying to hold on to somebody that God has cut off. Oh, you with me? See, 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 this is season. God says you got to be okay letting some of the branches you used to be beside go and cut them off. Go and let them go. I see it right now. I see it right now. You keep trying to prick the branch up and stick it back close to you. You keep trying to stick it back to you. God says stop trying to stick a branch that I've cut off back to you. Man, that's good. Yeah. You know why? This is, here, here, watch this, Gary. Watch this. This is in the text. You thought they were an asset, but they were really ashes. Woo! It's in the text because he says when he cuts off the branch that was not bearing any fruit that looked like an asset, he says he burns those branches and they become ashes. Woo! Uh, I don't know who I'm prophesying to. Uh, you think you've lost the love of your life. You think you've lost the job of your life. You think you've lost the friend of your life. You think you've lost a member of your life. You think you've lost some of your closest confidants. God says, get over that. He says, because you were fruitful, I cut you back and I cut them off. Stop trying to stick them back on. And the church said, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I ain't sorry, I ain't sorry. Wait, 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 stay with me. I'm almost out of your way. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So I can prove to you, I can prove to you that when you are cut, and when we are cut, and when I am cut, all of a sudden now the word hits me that's already been spoken a different way. <laughs> Come here, psalmist. The psalmist in Psalm 119, verse 17, he said, it is good that I have been afflicted. It is then that I learned your statutes. Am I talking to anybody in here? Oh, the psalmist said, when you afflicted me, when I went through trial and tribulation, when I had some dark nights and some valleys and some shadows it was then that I learned some words. It was then I went to my prayer journal and began to look over some notes for my sermons and I learned your word. We get closer to God when he cuts us and gives us a word. I just got a tweet from heaven. The worst thing to do is have God cut you and not have a word. 
that, that dropped straight from heaven. I received that. Uh, there was a tweet that just came right here. I don't know who I'm talking to. So you can't go through your affliction and don't press your way to the word. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. We go through stuff and we just survive it. Oh, I hear you, God. You fasting. You're being afflicted. But where is your devotion? Where is your 6 a.m. prayer? Where is your 6 a.m. prayer? Where is your nightly devotion? Where is your uh, 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 prayer with the family? God says, I need you to pursue the word. And the church said, whoo, uh, I, I'm almost done. Does this make sense? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I received that, Lord. I received it. So we are clean by the word. Watch this. We learned this last time. Cleaning gets us more fruit. But verse 4 says, in order for us to get much fruit, we have to abide. The process to produce more fruit is just for God to cut us, and we get a word. He says, but, but, he says, he says, but, but if you're going to bear much fruit, that's what verse 4 says, to get much fruit, we have to learn to abide. Can we just read the word? <laughs> look, look, look what it says. He says, abide in me. Verse 4, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the true vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Did you see that? Literally, he literally he goes into a litany of discussions with us about abiding. Verse 4, verse 5, verse 6, verse 7, all the, all the remaining verses in this text deal with abiding. Everybody shout abide, abide, A-B-I-D-E, abide, abide, abide. That Greek word men-o, men-o, M-E-N-O, men-o. It means to, to be present. It, it means to continue. It means to dwell. It means to tarry. Oh, come on, shout, abide, abide. And I like it because in most translations in the Bible, it translates it at the word stay. It means to remain. Everybody say remain. Remain in the word. Now notice that it says it. It says it over and over again. He says, abide in me and I in you. He keeps saying it over and over again. Jesus repeats it. Now Jesus doesn't have a short memory. He's trying to communicate something. He says, abide in me and I in you. Notice one time he says, if you abide in me and I in you. In other words, Jesus says, I never have a problem being with you, hanging out with you, tarrying with you, being with you. God says the issue is us abiding in him. That's the issue. Yeah, oh, I just got a tweet from heaven because all of a sudden now that you have much fruit, you have less time for him. <laughs> Woo! Come on, somebody shout, abide, abide, abide. He wants us to abide. Everybody shout, abide. So in other words, I am cut and I receive a word and I produce more fruit. I am cut and I have a word and I get closer to God and I produce much fruit. Everybody shout much fruit. I remain in you. I remain in you. Remember when we were together, I taught you specifically what the Holy Spirit said to me. He says, this is how you abide. Number one, you obey. Everybody say obey. You obey. You obey. You obey. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but I've had some ridiculous obedience around me the last 48 hours. The last 48 hours, I cannot believe believe the obedience I have seen in God's children. Oh, I just got a tweet from heaven. The second one is fast. That's the reason why you're fasting because it's going to increase our ability to obey God. It is humbling to see people who know how to do what God asked them to even though they don't understand. You are with me. You abide, you remain in him by obeying him, by fasting, by praying, by giving him time, by serving him. Oh, 
he says, he says in verse 7, and I'm, I'm, I'm hastening to my close, and I'm giving you these little bits of pieces I missed. Look what he says in verse 7. I, I just need you to get this. If you miss this, then you will find yourself stressed out in your much fruitness. Watch this. He says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Did you see that? In fact, let me read verse 8 too. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear what? Much fruit. So God literally says, watch this, Jesus says, he said, the way that you bear much fruit, notice, he said, the way you bear much fruit, the way you bear much fruit, he says, abide in me and I in you, he says, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Did you get that? Did, did you see that in the text? Did you see it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Listen, listen. He says, he says, abide in me and I in you. He says, he says, he says, he says, you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. God says much fruit is a demonstration of answered prayer. Much fruit is a manifestation of our prayers. Let me say it another way. Uh, much fruit is the manifestation of our prayer journal coming alive. Woo! Moving and living and having his being. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to some prayer journal folk. Oh, you can connect the dots with your prayer journal. Connect one year's prayer journal to another year's prayer journal. Connect the pages of a prayer journal. God says you will ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You are with me. Here's where I left off, and I'm out of your way. I omitted this. We got to connect this dot. We, we cannot leave this dot because something will be missing. Look at verse 7 again. Look at, look at it. If you, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will. Watch this. Watch this. Remember the title of the message. <laughs> Do unto you. Look, look what he says. Look, he says, if, if your words, if you abide in me and I abide in you and my words abide in you, he says, ye shall ask what ye will. Watch the text. He says, and it shall be done unto you. Come on, say, repeat this with me. Do unto you. Type it on the screen. Do unto you. Type it on the screen. Done unto you. Oh, let me see. Let me see if I can help somebody. There's a theological thread in scripture. And I want to suggest to you, it's the title of our message, Do Unto You. Can I drop this nugget? I'm out of the way. Everybody wants to produce much fruit. Uh, but, but what this text says is that we cannot do it by ourselves. That's what this text says. Everybody wants to do much fruit. In fact, I want to suggest to you the reason why it didn't work in 2021, the reason why it didn't work in 2019, the reason why it didn't work in 1998, the reason why it didn't work in year one, 1980, God says, because you were trying to do it yourself. We cannot do it. God does it, watch this, unto us. Woo! Even Jesus said it. They were impressed with his miracles. They were impressed with his signs, his wonders. He says, do not be tricked by me doing this. Oh, he said, it is the Father who does the work. Oh, he says, and greater work shall you do because I go to the Father. God says, I need you to understand. If you're going to bear much fruit, we must come to the reality. It is not us doing it but it's being done unto us Woo! I hear you you can't be a, be a great husband by yourself Woo! you can't be a phenomenal wife by yourself you cannot raise them eight three eight kids and three bonus kids by yourself you're gonna need the help of the almighty god okay 
Okay. Pastor, can you prove that to me? I, I sure can. I can't, I can't, I can't. This is what the Holy Spirit, he said, son, how did you leave this out? How, how did you miss this? It's right there in verse 4. He says it right there in verse 4. About it, me, and I and you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Did you see that? Everything I have envisioned, every dream, every goal, every ambition, every New Year's resolution, I cannot accomplish it by myself. It cannot bear fruit of itself. Did you see that? Woo. Except it abide in the vine. Come on, say that with me. Except it abide in the vine. Watch what he says. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I'm ending. Oh, the landing gear is down. But, but listen to what he says. I want you to get this in your spirit. You highlight it. You circle it. If you abide in me. Look, look he, says, he, says, he says in verse 4, he says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye. Notice that, Pastor, Pastor Joseph. He says, he says, you cannot produce this fruit that you want to produce. He said, you cannot produce it. You cannot produce it. And then he comes back in verse 4. He says, no more can ye. Now, what that suggests to me and what I hear is that what I used to do before I got this word, I will no longer be able to do by myself anymore. Oh, oh y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all, uh, in fact, let me say it another way. What I was doing before, I thought I was doing it myself. He says, look at here. I need to come to a place where I stop trying to do it myself, and I let him do it unto me. Am I talking to somebody? In fact, the Lord gave it to me like this. This text is a supernatural off button. No more can ye. Woo. You remember the picture we had up? You remember it? Gary, you remember it? You remember the stem? You, you remember? You remember? You remember? You remember it? You remember the picture? You remember it? Supernatural off button. All of a sudden, you, you remember? You remember? We had one stem. He cuts it. And when he cuts that stem, that stem now stops growing at the cut. And now the branch begins to produce more branches. God says you cannot do that yourself. We cannot. See, see, we here. We stuck. Look, 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 Pastor Joseph. We stuck. We stuck at the cut. The only thing we can do is rely on God and rely on Jesus to create branches on our branch. Oh, y'all are with me. I feel like dropping it right here. The Lord says, son, he says, thank God for sites of Faith Community Church International. Thank God for locations of Faith Community Church International. He says, but pastor, a location and a site is nothing but a branch. You cannot branch off and build more ministries by yourself. We must have the power of the almighty God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but yes, you've got a Fortune 500 company that you have begun. But God says you cannot spread all over the nation and all around the world by yourself. It's going to take the power of the Holy Spirit. You are with me. Mm. You are with me. I'm out of your way. Notice what he says. He says, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Woo. I don't know who I'm talking to. Uh, but that's why some saved folk lose their mind when they blow up. That's why some feel... With the Holy Ghost fire baptized folk burn out. They're exhausted. They're stressed out. They commit suicide. They have nervous breakdowns because we are trying to branch out ourselves. Woo! Elder said something to me last week. 
Uh, I haven't even talked about it with the congregation. My father went back in the hospital last week. And the elder said, Lord, pastor, he says, pastor, there's one thing I'm convinced of. That everything that prophetess has been going through, and everything that your dad has been going through, and everything that your mama's going through. He says, this one thing I do know, that you're not doing it in your own strength. Am I talking to anybody? That's why every now and then you got to break out in a tongue. You got to break out in a praise because you realize it's not me, but it is God. You know how folk look at you and say, I don't know how you do it. You want to just lift up a holy hand and say, I know how I'm doing it. It is the power of the almighty God. And the church said, Woo! Woo! This is what the Holy Spirit told me to tell somebody. <laughs> Your much is going to be much more easier <laughs> uh, when you let God do it. Woo! <laughs> I don't know who I'm talking to. I prophesy to you. He says, and I know, I know, I know we got some, some English scholars, pastor, there's a double negative. <laughs> well, let me double negative today. <laughs> oh, it's going to be much more easier. When you let God do it. Oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Somebody been debating, am I going to continue going to school to be a doctor? Um, that means I'm going to be in school four more years. That means I'm going to be in school eight more years. Can I tell you, be not weary and well doing. You're going to reap if you faint not. Yes, you can get that master's degree. Yes, you can get that PhD. Yes, you can work, raise a family, and do ministry. God says you can do it. In fact, God says the reason why you can't see yourself doing it is because you don't realize I'm the one that's supposed to do it for you. Notice what the text says in verse 8. Herein is the Father glorified. God says when we do it, we ultimately get the glory. No flesh can glory in his presence. It is God. Y'all are with me. Woo. I end. Notice in verse 5, he says, watch this. I want you to see this. He says, he says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, Ye can do nothing. God says it is abiding that helps us produce everything. He says, without me, you can do nothing. Notice he says nothing, no thing, N-O-T-H-I-N-G, nothing. And it's funny because my mom has been hanging out with me for seven months now. And I'm learning things about my mom I had never known ever in my life. Uh, and so I've been having prayer often with my mom. And if you've been on 6 a.m. prayer with my mom, if you've been in the middle of a prayer circle with my mom, if you're with us when we're on our knees saying her prayers at night, I notice that there's one line my mom is stuck on to her grave. And that is, she said, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. If I get the truth be told, that's my mama's testimony. All her life without you, God, I can do nothing. Can I find 10 people? people this morning who will decree and declare God without you I can do nothing now, now, now I got some way to prove this see see that's why he says if you ask anything in my name the father will do it did, did you catch that did you catch that, Trey? That, that, did you catch that prophetess? Did you see them? Oh, look at what he says. He says, if you ask anything in my name, the Father will do it. In other words, I'm not trying to do it. I just simply asked for it. Woo! Oh, our prayer lives ought to just went to another level. Oh, our prayer lives ought to jumped up a decibel. Oh, God, that's why I ask you, because I don't have to do it. Am I talking to somebody? You all with me? You tell Jarius, Jarius, I'm going to send you $100. 
Jairus ain't going to try to bark. Jairus ain't going to call his sister for it. <laughs> Pastor Orr, he going to call me back. He says, look at here, I asked for it. <laughs> now do it unto me. Am I talking to somebody? I don't know who I'm talking to. But God says, stop asking me if you're going to keep doing it. Stop, stop, stop asking me if you are going to be the deliverer of your spouse. Stop, stop asking me if, if, if you're the one that's going to figure out your career path. Stop asking me. God says the reason why we ask is so it can be done. Watch this. Unto us. I end with this. Can I end with teaching? Let me show you. I told you there's a theology. There's a theological thread. Go with me, Matthew chapter 17. That was last, this past week's devotion. Uh, go to Matthew 17. Look at it. 17, 20, and 21. Look at it. I'm, I'm trying to help somebody. You have to get this. If you do not get this, you're going to lose your mind on this next level. You're going to lose you're going to lose your you're going to be at wit's end. You're going to pull your hair out. Oh, I cannot tell you the days I've sat around. There's so much pressure at one time hitting me. If it wasn't for God keeping my mind in perfect peace, I could feel every issue trying to pull it apart. But it was God's word that kept me together. You all with me? Look, look, look. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 20 and 21, look what it says. It's a familiar passage. Look what it says. Look, he says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of size of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. Watch this. And nothing shall be impossible. What? Unto you. We had to have faith. To speak to the mountain. But God said it is not us moving the mountain. It is him doing it unto us. And the church said, ain't that good? It says in John 15, it shall be done unto you. Matthew 17, verse, tw verse, verse, verse 20 says, it shall be done unto you. Now watch this, because this messed me up. Go to Psalm 139, our New Year's Eve scripture. Go to Psalm 139, verse 17. I'm out of your way. Woo, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Psalm 139, verse 17. Psalm 139, verse 17. You there? Woo. 139. This is our theme. This is our, this is our, our, our New Year's Eve passage that we began this connecting the dots process. Look what he says. Look what he says. Look what he says. In verse 17, he says, How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. I didn't make it up. It's right there. How precious, how great are the sum of them. How, how precious are thy thoughts unto me. So God, I'm not trying to think my way out of this. All I need is your thoughts that you've given to me to solve this situation. There's a theology, theological thread that runs through the Bible. God says it's going to get easier for us. Because you don't have to do it. You don't have to figure it out. If I could tell you some of the stuff I'm praying for, you would laugh about this ministry. You say, oh, that's simple. Just do this. Oh, that's simple. Just do this. Without him, you can do nothing. I just got a tweet from heaven. Some of us don't believe that. Yeah, without him, you can do nothing. Whew. Our church is going to flow in a remarkable spiritual gift of healing. Somebody prayed it on 6 a.m. prayer on yesterday. We're not the healer. 
we're just the askers. We just make our request. I just got a tweak from heaven. Now we start to see why prayer is so important. Now we're starting to see why when we get blessed, all of a sudden the first thing we find it hard to do is have time to pray. So Satan, what he does is cause us to get stuck on one stem and one branch. And God says, I'm trying to give you four or five new branches. And the church said, man, I received that. It shall be done unto me. Come on, stand all over the building. Come on, I hear the Holy Spirit. Come on, stand in your house. Come on, stand in your home. Somebody feels the anointing. Go ahead and just pull over on the side of the road. Put your flashes on and give him a praise. Gary, God has done so much unto me the last three or four weeks. I've coined this term, I'm stuck in a praise. <laughs> Woo! I'm, stu I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck in a praise. I just want to grab my children and... <laughs> Do y'all know how good God is? Woo! I'm stuck in a praise. I give him glory. Do, do you know how amazed I am at all these chemicals they pumped in the prophetess for 16 sessions? And they've had crazy effects on her body and impacts, and there, there's, there's, there's certain uh, uh, residual responses to her body, but it just amazes me. I won't go say this, but I just feel it anointed because somebody, I noticed that it was in visit 15. The nurse practitioner comes in and she's trying to find the growth. Pastor Joseph, she had to say nothing. I saw it in her eyes. She says, I, I can't find it. Somebody stay with me. I don't know where it is. And we went in for our last session this week, and she's rubbing and moving. She says, I, I can't, I can't, I can't feel it. Nothing we did. The Father did it unto us. Moses will tell you, it was nothing I did when we got to the Red Sea. I, I just simply raised up the rod and the Father did it unto us. I don't know who I'm talking to, but let me prophesy to you. You do understand in the Old Testament, it calls Jesus the branch. See, that's why, Bree, he could not cut us because he's a branch too. God cut him on the cross so we could be one of the branches on the branch. Salvation is nothing but a branch on the branch. Jesus was saying in the garden, don't cut me, don't cut me, don't cut me, don't cut me. Nevertheless, go ahead and cut me. If you cut me, I'll bear much fruit. I'll say, Ronnie, from fornication and drinking and partying, I'll I save your husband from lying and stealing. I'll save your wife from adultery. God says, I will cause that branch to produce in the name of Jesus. Father, we honor you. Come on, somebody wants to get saved. Our time is well spent. I know it was a little long-winded, but that's what the Lord laid on my heart. And I give him praise. Because I, I believe those dots, hear me. In fact, I hear the Lord, 
I hear the Lord. Some of us, the vision is blocked from you seeing it because you thought you had to do it. God says, until you even understand that, that, that no more can ye, then I can show you everything you're fitting to be. So you want to get saved, just raise your hand. You want to rededicate your life, just raise your hand. Come on, just type it on the screen. I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. I'm tired of seeing my spouse go to church by themselves. I'm tired of my spouse being on the stream and, and blasting it through the house. I want to be saved. I believe God is saving five husbands. I believe that he's saving a wife. I believe that there's a 17-year-old son in your house getting saved right now. Somebody's getting delivered from, from crack right now. Somebody, somebody's being delivered from alcoholism right now, right now, right now, right now. The taste is being removed out of your mouth. It's being done unto you. We invite you to connect with Faith Community Church. It's a real church. It's not a perfect church, but it's a real church. It's not a perfect church. We're not a judgmental church. So shall ye be my disciples. Come on, hook up with Jesus. Come on, get saved. I had a member come up to me last Sunday and they said, they said, Pastor, I'm being delivered from cigarettes. I receive it. I'm, I'm going to put it down. I'm going to stop. How is it that you're asking God to give you long life and yet you're smoking yourself to the grave? So we thank you for salvation. We thank you. Just say, I want to connect with Faith Community Church. We will connect with you. In fact, the number right there on our screen, 919-451-2007. Call it, text it, and we'll connect with you. Type it on the screen and we'll come find you. Just say, reach out to me. I want to be saved. Reach out to me. I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart. Reach out to me. I want to reestablish my relationship with God. I want to say to God, I'm sorry for walking away. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Come on, give the Lord a wave off. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. We're getting ready to worship with our tithe, with our offering. We're getting ready to worship with our gifts and with our substance. I told you today I'm coming with a just because offering. <laughs> a just because offering. Just, just because. Worship with your tithe. You begin your giving with a tenth of what he's given unto you. God bless you with $2,000 last week. You, your tithe is $200. That's where you begin your giving. And, and I am bold. I, I, feel, I feel the Holy Spirit. I will say this. It was on my heart this week. It's amazing how many people say they love Faith Community Church. Pastor, I love you. Pastor, we've been with you. And profit is through this. But if you don't pay your tithes and offerings, I could have been homeless. The leadership of this church, the pastoral leadership of this church has a right to eat and to be compensated for the work we do for ministry. I see Pastor Orr here. Send him on. I call him, Pastor Orr. I need you to go visit this person. Do it right now. Go visit them. He shifts everything in his life to go. Can I take for granted the fivefold ministry gifts that God has placed in our presence? My pastor, as busy as he is, my first lady, they have called me. My bishop, my pastor, my first lady, they have reached out to us on a weekly basis. How are you all doing? 
Are you all okay? Do you need anything? So we're getting ready to worship. It's right there on your screen. Dollar sign FCC 1998. Go and give your cash app, give your gifts, give your substance. Man, I believe that this year is going to be a remarkable year. I thank God for staff. <laughs> Much fruit. Thank God for staff. Thank God for fleets of vans. Thank God for facilities and buildings. Thank God that we're able to build the Durham site, the hub site, and still buy three or four other locations for ministry. I believe it. I was talking to Deacon Leslie, and I remind you, God this year is going to build four or five millionaires in this ministry. So either it's going to be three or four, because I'm one of those. So it's three, three, four, four, five. So, so, so get in where you fit in. I believe it. Would you cut a, a $50,000 check if the ministry needed it? I was, I was at the, at the, at the cancer center for the last chemo treatment. I'm looking around and I saw people's names on walls because they donated a whole room to the hospital. My gracious! Pastor Joseph, they donated a whole room! A whole wing! mercy so we honor him we bless him we thank you for hanging out with us you can give via our website faithforecast.com you can bring it by the church office 4903 North Roxborough Street you can mail it you can bring it by we certainly appreciate you hanging out with us we'll see you Tuesday for Bible study I want to encourage you to bring somebody to worship with you I want to encourage you to share this broadcast after we end. Share it with someone. Tag someone. Invite them to be a part of what God has said. Come on, we close out. Repeat after me. Do unto you. Do unto you. Come on, one more time for the Holy Spirit. Do unto you. No more can ye. Except ye abide in me. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. God bless you. Pastor Ronnie T. Northam Jr. This is Faith Community Church International. Peace.